Hey you guys! A few weeks ago, RevoPoint, a 3D scanner manufacturer, launched on Kickstarter their new POP 3D scanner. In this video, we will test and review this scanner and share our results. You want to know more? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, my name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. Welcome back! But before we start, don't forget to give a like to this video and subscribe our channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or click on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, in today's video, we will test and review the new RevoPoint POP 3D scanner. This scanner was launched on Kickstarter at December 23rd of 2020 and will stay until February 4th of 2021. The announced main features are the accuracy up to 0.3 mm, multi-scanning modes, can export directly to STL files, is portable, easy to use and uses safe infrared light. The basic pack includes the scanner, the tripod, USB cables, a USB flash drive, which includes a user manual and software, markers, black gloves, and a sample model. As optional accessories, there's a phone holder, a turntable, LED light, and extra markers. And these are all the parts that we received. In this black box, we can find a USB cable to connect the scanner to the computer or smartphone. This cable is 1.7 meters long. The tripod and the scanner. The scanner is very small and light. At the back, we have the power on LED and the 10-pin micro USB connector. At the bottom is where we attach the tripod. At the front, we can see the infrared sensors, the RGB sensor and the projector. The turntable is 200 mm in diameter and includes markers at the top. At the side, we have the power input connector and the on and off switch. To power the turntable, we have this small charger type power supply. In our case, we received the wrong plug type, but since the input voltage of this power supply has a range between 100 and 240 volts, we can simply use one of these cheap adapters with it. In this small bag, we have this adapter to connect the USB cable to the smartphone. It has both Type-C and Type-B connectors, so it can be used with most Android phones. Also to use with the smartphones, we have this phone holder. This can be attached to the tripod, as we will see in a few minutes. In this bag, we have several things such as extra markers. This strip contains a bit of blue tack which is an adhesive paste that can be used to stabilize unsteady objects like a ball, for example. Black gloves. These can be used to handle the objects while scanning and the scanner will not detect them. A black plastic. This can be used as a background. And a small white statue that can be used to test the scanner. To start using the scanner, we need to connect the USB cable on the scanner side and to a 3.0 USB port on the PC side. In the flash drive, we can find a small video, the user manual and the software. The software needs to be installed on the computer and will work offline, which means that we don't need an internet connection and you don't need to upload anything for it to work. One important note is that the software will only work on 64-bit operating systems. 
After the installation, we get a couple of programs. The scanning software and the post-processing software. With the post-processing software, we can load the scan and make some adjustments to it. This will be handy to make small corrections to the scan. The scanning software is very simple to use. One thing we noticed is that the software has a minimum screen resolution to work correctly. The maximum screen resolution of our laptop is only 1366 by 768. With this resolution, the software window does not fit correctly on the screen and cuts out the buttons located at the right side. So, you really need a screen resolution of at least 1920 by 1080. Our workaround was to connect a monitor to the laptop and this way we could increase the screen resolution and get the entire window. The scanner was automatically recognized and it was ready to scan without any driver issues. At the left, we can see the images from the infrared and RGB sensors. Under each one of them, we can adjust the exposure and gain or set to automatic. The clip plane is used to remove unwanted planes in the scene, such as the turntable, a desktop or the floor. At the right side, we have the buttons in sequence and this way, very straightforward. To start a scan, we click on the top button. Then, we need to choose which type of scan we want to run. In this version, we had three types available, but during our tests, we received several update versions from the manufacturer. The scanner system was also updated a couple of times. One of the changes in the main software was this screen which gives more modes to choose from. The first is the feature mode. This is a general mode to scan with shaped features such as sculptures. Then we have the marker mode. This is used to scan the objects with no geometric features. Flat surfaces like a board or symmetrical objects like spheres are usually suitable to this mode. In this mode, we also need to add some markers. Then we have the face mode. This mode is specially used to scan human faces. The exposure and gain are set according to the face skin reflectivity. Then we have the body mode. This mode is used to scan the human body. Working distance for this mode is 200 mm further than the other modes. And then we have the dark mode. This mode is used to scan dark surface objects like black clothes for example. This does not mean that all black objects can be successfully scanned because deep dark objects like leather shoes for example are hard to scan as they absorb the light. And finally we can choose if we want to scan with color texture or not. Next we find the best position for the scanner and the model using the images at the left and the distance meter at the top. The center image also changes color indicating the distance. Now we just click on Start. It's possible to pause the scan to change the model's orientation and resume the scan. Changing the model's orientation is necessary to cover as many angles as possible. The next step after the scan is to create the mesh. If the scan included color texture, we need to process the texture as well. If not, we can then click on the final button to export the scan. It's possible to export in PLY, OBJ or STL format. The STL format will allow us to slice the model and print it with the 3D printer. The model came out fairly good 
and with basically the same size as the original. If we compare side by side the original model with the scan result, we can see that the scan model lost a little bit of detail. We tested several objects during our tests, some with color texture and some without. To cover all the angles, we can manipulate the model by hand, but for this, we need to use the included black glove. The black glove will not be detected by the sensor, so it will not be in the scan. Objects with more detailed surfaces were the ones that produced more feedback about the scanning capability of the scanner. Small details on the objects, like the roughness of this bare head and clothes, are difficult to pick up. We then tested scanning with color texture using this model. The color capture is not an exact match, but close enough to the original. In some cases, we found areas on the scanned model where there was mismatch on the surfaces. When this happens, we need to repeat the scan. Scanning slowly will help to produce better results. Black or dark areas are the most difficult to scan. The new software that we received includes some improvements on this matter, but there are still some difficulties. In this example, the boots of the model were not perfectly captured by the scanner. For this, we had to use the dark mode instead, but even with this mode, the boots were not scanned perfectly. There were still some gaps on some areas. For these tricky areas, we need to use the manual settings and play with the game. One thing that also helps is to add some sort of coating on the black or dark areas. This trick with the baby powder also works, but not when using the color scan because you are hiding the object's true color. Anyway, with some tweaking, the boots were then correctly scanned. The same thing happened while scanning this bird statue. Using the feature mode, the darker areas, like the dark feathers on the wings, were not captured by the scanner. However, using the dark mode, did help, and the scanner then captured the dark feathers correctly. This is another model that includes several small details on it and that we wanted to test. For this scan, we also included the color texture. And this was the result. Although the color texture is good, most of the small details from the original model, like on the tip of the shoe, for example, are missing on the scan. One other test we made was to scan Sandra's face. There are two modes we can use, face and body. 
The difference between face and body modes is that with face we get more detail but when using body mode the dark areas like the hair is easier to scan. Here we can see the difference of detail when scanning with face mode and body mode. Auto settings will not work with these modes. We had better results when tweaking the settings manually. Here we can see how her dark hair turned out. Hair can eventually get scanned, but it will require some time getting used to the settings and finding the best value. One other trick is to move the model or the scanner much slower. Some time ago, we made a tutorial video explaining how to use an Xbox Kinect 360 sensor as a 3D scanner. When comparing the POP with the Kinect sensor, the Revo Point POP has much better results, can scan smaller objects and produces more detailed scans. One advantage of the Kinect sensor is that it can scan dark hair more easily. There is also a smartphone application for the Android phones. In this app, we have access to the same settings as we have on the computer. To work with the smartphone, we need to attach the phone stand on the tripod and the scanner on top of it. Then we place the phone on the stand. To connect the scanner to the smartphone, it's included an adapter. This adapter has a USB Type-C and Type-B connectors to cover all Android smartphone models. This is a great feature as it makes the scanner mobile, easy to carry and easy to operate. For this test, we use a Xiaomi 10T Pro, but you don't need a powerful smartphone to use with this scanner. But it needs to have Android 9 at least to work. For now, it's only available for Android smartphones, but RevoPoint is working on the Apple version too. With this portable solution, it's possible to scan anywhere without the need of a laptop around. However, scanning under direct sunlight might be an issue because it will interfere with the infrared light that the scanner projects to scan the objects. Although the scans are not detailed as the original objects, we believe that they are not that bad for a consumer scanner and for this price range. So. What do you guys think about the scanner? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, check the video description for all the links and more information about this scanner. And that's it you guys, thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time. Bye!